Welcome yet again, dastardly dark denizens of the deepest depths. One of these days I'm going to get it perfect. Um, we are yet again reuniting with our favorite uh, pact of cantankerous villains, as they are now attempting to deduce where the mages are hidden who are apparently connected to the strange spate of pandemics that have been plaguing the earth for the past few decades. Abraham du Sable has told you that he was going to send over some information. You have just left the meeting in the Sears Tower, and you are exiting out the front door into the streets of downtown Chicago. It is about 2 in the morning. What would we like to do? Do we want to head back to Victor's place? Maybe discuss evidence and a plan of attack for figuring out where the mages are. Sounds good. Makes sense. Okay. You're going to head your way to Victor's place. Um, you're moving through the streets of Chicago until eventually um, there's a bit of traffic. You wind your way through some of the back alleys and you find yourself on a bit of a detour. The driver has taken a pass. Looks like one of the streets are blocked off. And you're in a section of town which is eerily quiet and strangely deserted. Uh, deserted. Uh, would anyone like to roll perception? Yes. I would as well. I'll also roll perception. Okay, I'm gonna oh, uh, whatever stat do we roll as well? Uh, it's your call. Wits, resolve. Just tell me why you pick it, and then we can just go from there. And do you mean awareness? Yeah, that's why I meant awareness. Uh, you can do awareness, resolve, awareness, intelligence, whatever you believe is appropriate. Okay, let's see what we got here. Ambrosi, uh, perhaps due to your third eye or perhaps due to other factors, in the moonlight, um, you're going through a section of town with some squat bronze stones about three to four stories tall, and you see the glint of something in a window, um, which you interpret to be a scope. What are you going to do? Everybody, get down! They have a sniper! <laughs> As soon as you say this, people duck down, and a single round goes through the side window of the car. The driver swerves and starts accelerating down the street. Um, it seems like you're trying to get a clean shot on the driver, but missed. You have driven away from as the location. As vampires, are we... Oh, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, as vampires, are we, like, immune to bullets? Um, you take superficial damage from it. Um, if you get shot in the head, um, it could technically kill you instantly if it's a sufficiently large bullet to, like, blow up your head. But if you were to, say, like, get shot with, like, small fire, like, say it blows off your jaw, you'd technically be fine. Same check. Sorry. Yeah, sure. Uh, the only thing that would be really cause a problem would be silver bullets. Um, would anyone like to investigate the round that is now embedded into the bottom of the floor of the car? Yeah. Very carefully. All right. Um, and without using my hands, I will pull my jacket sleeves over them. All right. Um, as you can probably interpret, it is a silver bullet. Um, they were shooting to kill. Um, had that gone through your heart, it would have been uh, the true death for any one of you. The ghoul slides a little partition aside and says, Hey, boss, is you all right? Yes. Thank you. Fuck. I can't keep the accent up. Uh, what? Yeah. Uh, I couldn't. I can't keep the accent up. <laughs> okay, that's fine. I just can't hear you. <laughs> All right. That guy knew we were gonna come down this route. I suggest we don't head back to the Victor's place. Do a lot of you have any place secret you might go to? Uh, 
will maybe certainly underground, but I don't think that uh, it is sufficiently secret. Mercurio, do you have um, do you have contacts in this area? Well, I mean, he isn't here, so I don't know. Or sorry, or, so not Mercurio. Mercurio, sorry, Paco. Uh, Paco, I'm gonna play Paco for the this scene, and then they're gonna skulk around. He knows a place, um, a. Uh, abandoned church, if I remember, where he's skulking down. Um, it would be a decent place to get to. If they wanted to stay low, they could take the sewers there. Um, what do you think to that idea? What does everyone make of that? For us to go to the sewers? Yeah, that way you're not above ground, and if anyone's trying to canvas you over the surface of the city, you can't be seen easily. That seems like our safest option at this time. And if you and ordinarily, I would not be caught. Ordinarily, I would not be caught dead going into the sewers, but seeing as I am already dead, uh, I suppose it can be done just this once. Mercurio will chuckle. And. Since we're going into the sewer, Mercurio will roll senses real quick, because we didn't do that. <laughs> Alright, go ahead, and then someone can pick the alternates. Also, before you depart from the vehicle, the ghoul is going to say the following. Oh, we had a package at the house. It was addressed to you as lots. Looks like it's from Victor. And he hands you a shoebox-sized object. Uh, crudely covered in, you know, kind of like butcher paper put together with a neat little bow, and it's addressed to the three of you. Um, you can see that the return stamps and stuff from it, it came from outside the U.S. It was originally sent from Russia, specifically uh, Moscow. Thank you. All right, let me find a decent... Maybe one of the larger sewer drainage things that, or rain cut off ones that kind of jut off from the river would be useful. He drives for a few blocks, finds one of the side drainage canals, and deposits you there. Well, I guess we hop out and kind of, uh, Francois is going to look at it and just in complete disgust and annoyance, like, Really? I know it's going fast. I can. Mercurio will take the shoebox sized package carefully, shake it lightly. There's something very large and heavy inside of it. And since it did not immediately breathe, bite, snort, or, or explode. Kind of him. He shall tuck it underneath his jacket and sense his straining to see as safely as possible step into the entrance of the sewer. Alright, uh, just also, give me... How do I... I'm sorry, I've been looking for a word of oh, 1d5 on here, and I'm it's been just a while. do Just do slash r space d5. Okay. Okay, let me consult the table. Okay, you hear, and you're hearing, you, you hear another sense, so roll another d5, or someone can literally blurt out what they would believe would be the most disadvantageous thing to hear. Uh, maybe I mean, you smell seems like the go-to. Yeah. Going in the sewer. You hear smells. Alrighty. And thank you. All right. Uh, give me a strength check because you're gonna have to like kind of pry open the kind of uh, tough grate over the sewer, and then you can enter into it. Okay. You ply off the grate, 
and a lot of you slide in, and I imagine you're going to replace the grate? Yes. All right, perfect. You are now, theoretically, safely within the confines of the sewer. Uh, Paco has done some, you know, gun running and associated other activities within the confines of the sewer, so he knows his way around. Getting to the location will be simple enough. Now, a lot of you have just survived what you believe to be, reasonably, an attempted assassination. What is your interpretation of the situation? Uh, Francois, at least, is probably thinking that it's... I mean, the mage is out to get them, honestly. You know, dug too deep. So to speak. Could be the mages, could be the government, could be... Well... Could be the werewolves. Well, I don't think it's the werewolves. It would have been a bit more direct. Yeah, they're not the long con kind of type. But you don't know. Mm-hmm. How about you, Mikario? What do you make of the situation? In the last few centuries, I doubt any one of us has not made enemies. And these partic- this particular enemy tonight knew where we were going, which would suggest they are a more recent enemy, or an enemy of what we are doing right now as opposed to some other conflict. Regardless, I suspect we can currently trust no one, and I do not believe there will be much use in dwelling upon who it was who fired that shot. Are we familiar with the Second Inquisition? You are welcome to roll a... Let me see here. You're sufficiently old vampires that you would have at least a mild understanding of them. But unless you took a lore sheet, you'll be a little bit behind on stuff like that. Well, it's just like, um... It also could be the Second Inquisition. We've been a bit loud or active over the last couple of, uh... weeks. You haven't heard any mutterings or things of that nature. Um, They've actually seemed to be a little placid lately. You haven't heard any shakings going on against any of the larger kindred uh, sections in the large cities within North America. Although perhaps something might be going down in Europe and you're not aware of it because it was so swift and deadly that uh, no one was around to understand or to convey what occurred. As always, thank you for your insight, Ambrosi. My stance has not changed. We do not have time to try to figure out who fired that bolt. There are too many possibilities, and all of them brought us to the same action in here. Paco kind of gestures down the hall, keeping to himself, muttering as he guides you through the remnants of the sewers towards the church where you can have a brief reprieve. Now, um, you are welcome to examine the box here if you wish, or you can wait until you arrive at the church. Uh, What would you all like to do? I would like to open it here. Um... I kind of find it suspicious that we would have received this package and also a bullet later. Okay, how are you going to open the package? Uh, Mercurio will make one more awareness check of our surroundings. Go ahead. And uh, pull out his smartphone flashlight and set the box on the ground. Uh, depending on what that rolls, um, what he perceives. All right, give me an awareness and whatever you believe is appropriate. Awareness wits, awareness however you see fit. All right. You still your breath, well, you don't breathe. Um, you calm your mind for a moment. 
and you have everyone else enter into a hushed silence and you stop your footsteps. You take a deep breath and the swirling ugh, stench in here, you can hear what's going on just through the stenches alone, the gurgling in the distance, the affluence, the rainwater, the chemical runoff, all these things going in here. You don't detect any adulteration in this large chemical milieu of anything aside from the four of you. You seem to be alone. Mercuria will carefully place the box down on the ground and stand above it with his phone flashlight. Mm-hmm. And then we'll look at Paco and say, Shall you do the honors? Paco steps forward, takes out his little butterfly knife, slices open the package and opens it. The interior of it seems to be the desiccated, dried out remnants of a suckling pig that has been painstakingly peeled apart and separated into its constituent elements. There is a small bundle of skin, a small bundle of bones, and the dried organs on one side. That I'm sounds a, disgusting. Can we make an occult uh, check on it? Yes, you are allowed to. Uh, let's see, intelligence? I guess intelligence. Mm-hmm. Intelligence and you look at it and think, what a strange thing to do. It would take a long time to do. And then you realize, ah, you know what this is. Roll aspects while holding the parts. Aspects, uh, what? Resolve or? I believe it was intelligence. Trying to I don't recall it was intelligence. Oh, we're, oh, we're doing the premonition stuff? Yeah, we're doing the premonition stuff. Yeah, yeah, I believe I was intelligence. So go ahead and roll me aspects intelligence. Wow, today's the day. Well, the DC's low on this. You reach the conclusion that Victor thought that this would be the simplest way to send you a covert message. He mutilated the pig, and while mutilating the pig, thought of and spoke aloud following message. You feel the pig and you see Victor's desperation and zeal, his fear and his panic, and you get the mental impression that he had discovered something large, something important while he was doing this. Um, you get the feeling that something very large has happened in Moscow in the past two days that is going to be of great importance to your mission at hand. Um, you get the feeling that Moscow, Russia, Something pertaining to an explosion seems to be of bearing to your case. Um, he wished he could have intuited more things, but you have to really concentrate in order to get these kinds of mental impressions through emotions and feelings and fears. And this is the best he can manage during the circumstances without being caught. And that's all you read from the aspects. It seems our friend Victor may be uh, having some problems um, in Moscow, where he is. Something related to our current misadventures. Is the pandemic not worldwide? Uh, that makes some sense, I suppose. No, uh, it seems he's found something related to, um, well, related to what we're searching for. Hmm. Well, clearly we are not working in Chicago at the moment. Perhaps a trip to Moscow uh, to speak in person would be advantageous. Uh, I certainly do not want to receive any more, and he'll gesture to the foul remnants of the pig, any more messages like this. This is terrible. Mm, 
I mean, you you knew him. He has always had a particularly bad taste from what I've gathered. <laughs> But no, it's an effective, if uh, interesting, method of uh, notifying us of what our potential, pro like, that bears up some sort of potential problem. Uh, my only concern is that he hasn't, um, he really hasn't given us any indication of what exactly this is, or what exactly he's found. Only that he's found uh, potentially something. Troubling indeed. Yes, and that he's also possibly in trouble, but I'm sure he can um, find his own way, way home safely. Is there Any of us have contacts in Moscow? Ambrosia, you do recollect that um, explosion and Moscow and things of that nature seem to be the most prominent pieces of information that you intuited from Victor's mental state during your aspects. Uh, yes, yeah, so there was something about explosions in uh, Moscow. Presumably, that is related to uh, what of what we have been encountering. Or to say, uh, for, like, or. Hard to say exactly how that is uh, related to our problems. Uh, can I just like Google if there's been any like explosions in Moscow or any terrorist attacks or anything like that? That is exactly what I wanted you to do. So yes, please. You can't do it right now because you're underground in the sewer. But as soon as you're out, yes, that that is the uh, the inclination. It was actually a um, blaze at a Moscow fireworks warehouse yesterday. Like really. Yeah. <laughs> wow, that is so weird. Uh, I wish I, I wish I incorporated that. I would have been a genius. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's not too late. Uh, <laughs> nah, I, I have something very specific in mind for this. So, um, aside from the strange pig in the box, there is nothing else of note in there. Um, are you going to bring it along, or are you going to leave it here? Mm, I'll bring it along. Could make for a good snack. Oh god, I bet that pig is tasty. Anyway, you're going to make your way through the sewer, and eventually Paco is going to show you a large sewer grate, which seems to be leading into uh, some kind of pump room. Um, he unlocks a lock that is on the exterior of the pump room, enters, and you can see a staircase that is leading into what seems to be some sub-basement. Um, it seems this pump room is used to maintain something large on the surface, but has been forgotten. Um, it looks like perhaps there is a factory here at one time, but they demolished the factory and simply paved over the sub-basement, which has remained intact, except for one hatch which seems to go into the church itself. He goes up to the church, uh, the door, the hatchway, presses his ear to it, stills his mind, concentrates, and goes, it's safe to go up, and then he pushes the hatch open, and exits to the top and extends a hand down to help everyone else up. Um, do we move into the church? Yes, I, I think yeah. none of us have problems cross, uh, crossing hollow to ground, only as Victor, right? Yeah, Victor's the only one that has that uh, folkloric bane. Um, it's also a decommissioned church, so I suppose technically maybe it wouldn't count, um, but for the time being we'll simply state that uh, We'll simply state that it doesn't count. Um, so you enter into the church. Paco looks at a lot of you and says, you'll be safe here. Avail yourself of supplies, any materials you need. Um, I'm going to go around and see if I can find some Tremere contacts, maybe touch base with Dusable in a covert manner, and I'll report back if I find anything of note. How does that sound? I'm sorry, it didn't quite catch all of that. Paco is going to go find contacts and come back when he finds contacts. Great. All right. Is that fine with Mr. everyone? Mr. Buck. Yep. You wish you well. Try not to get me at that. Thank you kindly. Uh, he goes through the hatch, shuts it, and you hear him skulking down into the sub-basement, into the sewers again. Now, you survived an assassination attempt, and you are now capable of Googling what happened in Moscow. 
I Google what happened in Moscow. Mercurio is just gonna like hover over his shoulder and not wait for. Mer Mercurio is a little impatient and is just also looking. Um, you Google explosion Moscow and you see that uh, the Ministry of Science today is reporting that the recent explosion at the Ministry of Science's Chief Biological Research Division, basically the Russian equivalent of the Centers for Disease Control, um, the the facility's automated defenses where if say there's a leak it incinerates everything had been inadvertently triggered killing everyone inside and destroying the entire supply of biological and virological materials that the Russian authorities had on site for uh, research and scientific development. Um, the article kind of goes on and on about how the fire seems to have contained all specimens but um, the Russian government is going to take measures in order to safeguard global health and is currently quarantining the entirety of Moscow, um, which you can kind of understand is one of the reasons why it is very difficult for Victor to escape unnoticed. The humans are a bit uh, on the uppity side now that this factory has been um, obliterated. Um, you're trying to wonder what he wanted for you to intuit from this uh, particular piece of information. Uh, would anyone like to make a guess as to what the problem is with this piece of information, what he wished to convey to you. Would not well, this you first. Oh no, you go. I I really don't have any ideas. I was going to start by eliminating the things that sound least likely. Well, oh, well. Uh, what was that? You kind of broke. I was going to say that um, it reminds me of the factory in um, I think it was St. Louis that burned down. Um, the one that was the super fun site. I, I'm just drawing connections of like, hey, this is the second building we've seen burned down so far, and that's kind of all I got. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I'm also um, approaching it from a similar angle. Uh, if I'm true, uh, true conspiracy theorist route, uh, the humans had gotten too close <clears throat> to the actual uh, source of a cure, and the Illuminati, uh, whatever organization is, um, like you know, trying to keep, like trying to keep these viruses going, uh, you know, struck and absolutely destroyed them. Hmm. And okay. all I'm hearing is more reasons that we need to go to Moscow. Or well, we need to find the mages here too, though, right? Yes. Yeah, but why I'm... are we looking for the mages here again? Like, I know that we are, but I forget, like, what the series of events was that led to us being like, oh, we need to find these mages. Um, the mages seems to have, this mages seem to have stole, stolen research that the werewolves were working on that was basically biological weapons and what have you. And the mages seem to have went there, killed all of the werewolves, except technically one who escaped. Um, you still have that giant drawer full of documents and what have you. Mm -hmm. And... Mm -hmm. You haven't. Ex you've only examined some of the sketchings and stuff. You haven't examined the rest of the documents. Um, the reason you need to hunt down the mages is it seems that the mages are trying to take whatever the werewolves are doing, and seemingly do that or stop them. It's kind of unclear, but you can tell that the mages are trying to kind of go above the heads of the werewolves and accomplish something, which technically seems to coincide with what the werewolves wanted to do. I mean, think of how much information we got from St. Louis. I think we have very little choice but to attempt to rummage through Moscow. The difficulty will be getting there since we're, we've just been, well, shot at. Well, the city is locked down, so I think it might be difficult to do much rooting around. Unfortunately, this is no uh, decades old super fun site. You are not wrong. Let us think about this. We need to figure out the mo the So we have... I, I think that we can probably make the assumptions that it was the mages that did it. I don't think it's likely the way it works. Um, activating automated defenses, that does not seem like a way it works. I know that seems more subtle, more subterfuge. And so I think that we can pin this squarely on the mages. So we have our who. Uh, I think that the next important question would be to ask ourselves why. 
um, they are clearly trying to control information uh, between the Superfund site and the Werewolf cadre. Uh, now this, they are trying to keep others from perhaps learning about the disease, perhaps developing it. So I suppose that at this point, uh, the idea of development is somewhat moot as it's already running wild throughout the human population, uh, which raises it, and Ian, interrupt me if like I make a, if I say something that is me misremembering past things that we've learned. You got it. Um, so that means that they are trying to do one of two things. They either trying to prevent uh, research relating to the virus or to supplement their own research and make it stronger or cure it, essentially. There's no two ways about it. Now, I would suppose that if they have already made the virus and they have already released it, uh, as it's likely that they are the cause, then they probably made it as strong as they like. Uh, there is no reason to release a half-finished virus. So, with that in mind, I think that we can either look to them preventing it from being cured or preventing its true nature being known. Uh, I lean more towards the former, as that seems uh, like the greater concern of theirs, and the fact that they are starting to uh, look at human uh, uh, humanitarian organizations and human viral research organizations makes me think that they are trying to prevent a cure or a vaccine from being developed. Does this make sense to my compatriots? Unfortunately, yes. It's a very good interpretation of events, I gotta admit. It's pretty solid. You're technically missing one thing, though. One last inference, but you can pick that up later. Now, uh, Francois has actually made a pretty astute breakdown of the dichotomy here. Um, I'm going to have to say that both those options, reasonable, accurate, sound. Mercurio and Brosi, what do you take of Francois' interpretation of events? I highly suspect you are correct. And forgive me, I'm feeling so overwhelmingly trapped. Mercurio is going to look at their surroundings again as if looking for not their literal surroundings in the church, but for some sort of mental or uh, thematic explanation or way out. What does Mercurio hear at this time? Hear in what way? Uh, he's hearing sounds and smells currently. You... You hear time. You hear age. The kind of weathered stench of old wood. The scent of dried grasses outside from the heat. And you smell... You hear... You hear the remnants of a long night's drinking. You focus your hearing? Yes. You hear brandy and urine. Ew. He's going to visibly make a face. Ambrosi, what say you? Mm, hard to say. Um, <clears throat> I really don't have any uh, sort of fervor intuition uh, 
down to this. But the Russians don't exactly have the greatest reputation um, for, you know, working amongst other humans. Um, typically, a relationship is kind of combative, so that I I'd assume that they're trying to develop the weapon perhaps further, although it's really hard to say. Ian, can I use cold knowledge that Francois would in no way, shape, or form reasonably, or not Francois, yeah, Francois have access to, but Cole has knowledge to? I'm going to say um... reasonably that um, Francois kind of demonstrated that they like to dabble in medicine and other stuff too. Um, I'm totally fine with that. Like, yeah, you're more okay. than welcome to. That's fine. I, I think I kind of established that we can kind of do a little bit of a polite fiction when it comes to medical stuff that Francois gets bored and wants to know how to, you know, get yourself super high or get someone super high without killing them. So they know a lot I about mean, pharmacology and chemistry. We've all lived for hundreds of years. It's highly plausible that, to get bored in that time. Mm. I mean, he's okay. tried every drug at least once. <laughs> um, you, you raise an excellent point, though, with the Russians not cooperating with the rest of the world in the same way regarding health issues. But... If anything, that makes it somewhat more compelling because the Russians, uh, you know, during the Cold War, their medicine branched off from the rest of the world. Um, they focused on a different kind of vaccines. I cannot remember exactly off the top of my head uh, what that research was. I think it had something to do with uh, fungal medicine, whereas the rest of the world, the West, so to speak, they, they uh, used bacteria. More on bacterial. They used bacteriophage therapy. They made viruses that ate bacteria. Right. Yes, thank you, Ian. That, that is exactly what I was talking about. Yes, thank you. Um, that's a genuine thank you for reminding me. Um, but they focused on bacterial phage therapy. And so they, are, they have done research and they have pursued medicines that the rest of the world, especially the West, where the rest of the medical research tends to happen, just does not have access to. They have not invested the time and the energy and the money into it. So, if the Russians are making great headway with their bacterial phage uh, technology, uh, something that this virus may be extra susceptible to, then it's entirely possible that they were further ahead than the rest of the world. And that uh, that is where the greatest leaps and bounds regarding uh, the cure was. Hmm, fascinating. Um, but what about, like, the, oh, the Chinese? I know they had their own, um, what is it, initiatives to look into, you know, traditional herbal Chinese medicines. Um, have they had any sort of similar incidents? Uh, not as far as I am aware. Unfortunately, much of the Chinese uh, herbal medicine remains uh, not properly studied. Uh, I would guess that, you know, they have their teas, they have their roots and such, but uh, as far as I know, that was not as effective uh, combating in regard in relation to modern medicine well because I was thinking if it's a uh, more occult origin for the virus perhaps the uh, Chinese uh, traditional herbal medicines may have come up with something it's very rare to my knowledge that uh, uh, science modern science can do anything to explain the occult. You raise a very good point, actually. It would be... You are correct. Uh, it would be funny to assume that this is a purely natural disease. These are the mages, after all. We can only expect that they will infuse some sort of magical essence into it. Uh, hmm. Do either of you know much about uh, Russian mysticism? Uh, Rasputin and the Druids? Or the Druids German? Unfortunately, I'm not as up to date on all that. I do not. I have um, to Google, and I'm sure we can find a library somewhere once we uh, figure out what to do here. Ja oh, sorry. Um, what is Jaws' character called? Huh? What was Jahi's Victor. character called? 
Victor. Victor would probably uh, know more about that. Um, can I just roll a, a cult um, to check it? Yeah. To see if you would be aware of things of that nature? Yeah. You're more than welcome to. Wait, why is... Did I accidentally close out of the tab? Recall uh, mild references in the past that Victor has made to situations or events or Russian and Slavic folklore, which gives you the impression that he is privy to such things. Okay. Yeah, perhaps we should uh, then head on all well, head on over to Moscow. But I really do want to find the base of the um, the mages here first. Mm-hmm. Oh. Is there very much research going on at the hospital in Chicago? Uh, yeah, actually, Chicago actually has a very well-rounded um, medical research division. Um, I actually anticipated you lot trying to break into one. Uh, the one that has the most is Northwestern Medical uh, Center over there in Evanston, which is a bit of a, like, 45 minutes away, kind of up a little bit on the edge of the coast. I think north of the city? Yeah, north of the city. That seems to be the place that's doing the most research. They're also the place that had that CDC attache office there. So you might be able to actually get access to CDC data if you were to break into that hospital. It's uh, fun. Um, I would love to see that epidemiological information. The other thing I'd like to ask as well, is, like, as an aside, is do we have like uh, Nazi occultists Oh god, I should have done that. That would have been so great. <laughs> or no. Robert, like, or Robert, instead of like uh, Nazi cultists, it'd be like uh, Soviet, uh, you know, maybe like white Russian sort of kind of occultists. Mm. Or oh, not Soviet, but like uh, white Russian sort of occultists, maybe. Um, Zaris. Go Zaris. Yes, that's, that's what I meant. Yeah, Zaris cultists. Um, yeah, you have Zaris cultists. Um, there's actually a few source books, I think, that actually touch on that from like second edition and stuff. I'd have to dig them up. Um, you're definitely um, you. A lot of you are actually on a lot of right tracks with the information that's prevent that's been presented to you. So um, I think that we're actually looking at the shorter time frame for the game. Um, but the major clincher here is you need to figure out where the damn mages are in Chicago because um, mm -hmm. it seems, and you don't know why, uh, the mages are concentrated here for some strange reason. Their plan hinges upon Chicago and the area idea what okay um I, you know i'll explain this in character so i can keep on using french accent um bah, I, I don't need have to oh, sorry. Go ahead. but i want to <laughs> <laughs> no 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 as in, you, do, you don't need to like be in character to use a french accent <laughs> you know what that's very fair and that's even more i want to so that's very fair um i have i have an idea so, what we have is our is the theory. The theory is that the mages are behind the disease, that they are trying to suppress research, which will potentially cure this cadre of diseases that we assume that they have produced. This is only a theory. We have not proven it yet. And we must locate the mages. So, I think that there is a way to kill two birds with one stone, uh, supposing that it goes as planned. Uh, do you two get what I'm getting at? Forgive me. I have the loudest headache. My apologies. You we, you really just get out of this year, uh, so that is fair. Um, what we do is we set a trap by which our doctor friend, who uh, Victor enthralled a while back, well, perhaps he's not our friend anymore. We did hate crime him and his wife. Uh, but our, our, uh, the person we know, the person whom we know of, uh, uh, we could somehow leak it out that he has found some sort of miracle cure for this cadre of diseases. 
and that his research has produced a way to solve it, uh, and that he plans to unveil it, you know, at some point in the near future. Now, if our theory is correct, that it was the uh, mages who released it and wish to suppress the cure, then they will make themselves known, and they will appear, and they will try to end him. At which point, we will have them in hand, our trap laid. Well, if we also want to take it a step further, um, we can have multiple different false stories, you know, speak to the werewolves, um, let, them, let it slip that it's, uh, they developed a cure, you know, and that they're going to be in, uh, unveiling it at one location on one date, and maybe let it slip to the vampires that it's uh, another location at another date, and see which date um, they strike at. The only problem with this is that after the first date passes, they will realize very quickly that it was a ruse and may wise up to us by the second one, even well, though there are different factions. Well, the thing is, if, uh, if a source of a leak is, you know, from the vampires uh, or from, you know, the werewolves, we will know who it is and sort of who to pay more attention to. You're right. Uh, well, we, I, I, my only concern with this idea is that we are not concerned with who is leaking information. We are concerned with drawing out the, the mages, correct? Because I yep. do not much care if the vampires are leaking information or the werewolves are leaking information. We know that the mages are not uh, aligned with the werewolves. They certainly made that clear. Uh, rather, I think that the biggest thing would be to draw them out. Well, if it's, let's say, the werewolves, it's a decent excuse to um, engage um, the prince and have him and his expert uh, slayers, you know, take care of a couple of problems at once. Extra favors uh, never hurt. I like it. Does that make sense then? So perhaps, perhaps rather than saying that it is the doctor that cured it, we say that the werewolves cured it. The mages will attack the werewolves, the werewolves will fight the mages, and we can convince the prince that because the werewolves are involved, uh, he can engage his forces and mop everything up. Yes, it should help uh, him uh, get some additional stability in this uh, lovely city. Perfect. Uh, I suppose that the next step then would be to meet with the prince and uh, start laying the seeds um, that the vamp that uh, the werewolves are working with the mages. Well, I, I suppose we should talk to the prince, uh, let him know what we are thinking, uh, where things are at, and uh, from there, perhaps use him to lay our plot, lay our yeah. little trap. The only f issue is I'm not sure how to gather uh, the werewolves in uh, one location. I don't really, I, have, I haven't really figured out what really motivates the motivates them. Won't the discovery of a supposed cure interest them enough? No? Mm, that would probably interest them, but would it be enough to gather a good number of them? Probably not. They would be wary for any for eh, for anything coming from us true we would need someone on the inside yes and i don't know if we have anyone i perhaps know one person who i might be able to talk to ah uh, but i would have to do it alone 
fine. I, I guess uh, Paco's already left, correct? Yeah, he left ages ago. Uh, who's this person you wish to speak with alone, Francois? Also, can I commend a lot of you on your, like, 5D hyper chest power play that's going on here? <laughs> this is the exact kind of thing you're supposed to get out of Vampire the Masquerade. It's just Italian, 14th century Italian politics. This is exactly what I wanted. I'm DMing you who I want to talk to. All right, perfect. Ah, oh yes, of course. Pee Wee Herman. You would really know how to help out now. Hmm. Pee Wee Herman is a vampire, it's confirmed. Um... Okay, um, we've been playing for about an hour. Do we want to take a quick little fiver? That sounds good. Okay. All right, we are back from our break. Um, at present, our dark den dark denizens are attempting to figure out how to dig themselves out of this hole. They have a variety of angles. Um, feel free to discuss among amongst yourselves what angle you wish to approach. Um, you're welcome to simply kind of nail down a plan and perhaps the next section session can be a little bit longer than usual and we can really get into the meat and the thick of it especially because we're going to have to go on a pretty uh, lengthy little hiatus uh, due to moving and some business and what have you so you're more than welcome to simply kind of hammer out what you want to do for the next uh, few sessions like what's the battle plan what's the trajectory what do you think is going to happen and we can go from there how's that sound good Sounds good. All right, so do we want to hunt down the majors or do we want to go to Prince Jackson? What do we want to do here? I believe Ambrosia is right in that we should at least be able to show that we tried. However, I don't want to stick our necks out while doing it. Not too much. I also believe we should concoct words to tell as little as possible, as little as permissible, even to the prince, given the common fang measuring and, forgive me, fetish for betrayal that many kindred have. Everyone acting like adults is a rare and useful thing. I'm glad it's happening during an emergency, but I do not trust them. What is it that we want to do during our quick little romp to look for mages? Is, is my mic off? No, uh, no, you're good, I'm just thinking. Yeah, no, no, it's all good. I just Discord blipped for a second. What do the dark denizens dream drearily think is going to happen? And that generally sounds good to me. Like, I don't like that. Yeah. All right. So for our search for mages, uh, what do we want to put into it? What do we want to do? We were going to uh, pretend that we had found a cure, right? Mm, before that. Right? Well, that's going to be what draws the mages out. I was under the impression that Ambrosi believed we should run the entire fake, pl fake cure plan by the prince for some reason. And that we would have yeah. to put your mages elsewhere before that? Well, I don't know why would we need to find mages before. I, I think that... I, my only thinking for running it by the prince is that way we have the prince's resources behind us. And, like, if and when a fight breaks out with mages, I'd rather have a bunch more vampires behind us. That is a good idea. Well, it's also... Um, the, the reason I'd want to find the mages' base is because let's say the plan kind of goes like tits up and we don't get to take out the mages well we're going to run somewhere and that place is likely going to be their hidden uh base so if you can prepare like a second ambush you know mm -hmm. on the way back um like we have a better chance of you know 
taking them like when they're expended resources, you know. Yeah. All right, I'm in. Um, so how do we want to go about searching for that base? The other thing that we could do is actually like while they potentially go out, we can strike at their base directly. How do you propose we find the base, though? Um, so if we find the base, we find the mages, so it kind of makes everything else a moot point, you know? Oh, uh, try to keep it a little bit in character, which means French accent, Francois. Oh, right. <laughs> you mean? Me? Uh, oh, can we um, the original, what I was originally thinking was just kind of driving around the city. However, with the uh, recent attack on my life, which has left me scarred, I feel that like that would not be the best uh, thing to do. I second that. I can't believe I'm saying this. I almost wish we had Victor's input here. Almost. It would be useful, wouldn't it? It's a possibility. Maybe I just farted by accident instead. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see, what's the other thing to... Like, what, like... Um, might Mercurio Google I'm trying to think of how to word this uh, where's our Chicago ghost store by the way <laughs> oh yeah we need to do that I highly suspect that our Chicago ghost tour will bring us important insight. Oh god, no. <laughs> no, no, that's great. We can decide on the tour, potentially based on information found during it, where the mages are. Or clue with it. Well, y'all, oh. the, the whole point of the ploy to draw them out is so that way we can find where they are. You well, know, because if we find where they live, We've already found where they are, so like it, it feels like we're trying to figure out where they are, where the mages are, so that way we can figure out where they are. I guess. Oh, so well, for me, it was it. like if we can. I was thinking if we can draw them out, it's easier to, um, you know, take them. Presumably, their base would be heavily fortified. Um, so it's while finding them is like one half of the battle. We may not necessarily be able to, you know, take them directly there, right? So having them uh, uh, come out, or you know, having werewolves attack them, or something along those lines to kind of soften them up. Uh... And this is this is why. So that is why we draw them out with the lies that we have a cure, uh, or that the, the werewolves have a cure at least. And then they fight the werewolves. That softens them up, and we go to the prince in advance that so way we have the prince's forces behind us and then once they have fought the werewolves we will rush in and fight them and hopefully end them and presumably take at least one captive so that way he can take us back to the base and we can raid it for uh, anything more I like this plan I believe we should simply go to the prince Ambrosi, does this uh, work for you? Sure, yeah, that works. Uh, all right. So we're off to see the wizard. And by wizard, I mean mm -hmm. the, uh, the prince. I. Uh, do we also want to like try and <clears throat> figure out who shot at us first? Yeah, that might be important. Uh. All right. I guess. Couldn't hurt. So do I, have guess. Nice I don't like being shot. Uh, no, do you have any... Not pleasant. Do you 
have any ideas to figure out how to do this because I'm kind of drawing a blank other than, you know, sending out a couple of ghouls that look vaguely like us and seeing their Please! Heads. Please crudely Me trust cool. ghouls to look like yourselves so they get killed! <laughs> uh, like, Mercurio, I believe you saw where the shooter was located, correct? Uh, when you it was saw Ambrosi. It was Ambrosi that saw it. Uh, yes, uh, I vaguely saw, like, vaguely saw it on top of a rooftop, I'm not sure exactly where, kind of, um, or I mean, do I know exactly where it was? Give they, me like, a, let me look at your stats really quick and see what the hell you could roll here. Give me an intelligence resolve check, DC 5. Did it roll? I'm not seeing anything. Are you... Uh, it doesn't show you as, um... Online. Well, let me refresh. Here, I'll roll it for you. Ah, uh, you got a four. Oh, shit. I just got kicked out. Okay, I'll let you roll it, though, just to be a Christian about it. Okay, got it. Wow, look at you. Yeah. Um, you would remember what building the guy shot from if you went there again. Hmm. Um, I'm not as familiar with the city as you guys, so I can't tell you exactly where, but if we retraced our steps, which I'm not exactly keen to, I believe I could... Uh... <laughs> well, you know what? Do I know about Google Maps and the, you know, the street view? You can, you do have a technology skill? See I do not. Yeah, I don't you, have any. Yeah, you uh, don't. Anybody. I think Mercur Mercurio and yeah. Francois. Um, technically, Francois shouldn't be able to, but I'm just gonna give him a pass. Um, Mercurio certainly can. Mercurio can just say, hmm, "What if I were to show you a map while we were here?" I mean. Be 2D would not really be that helpful. I believe I'd need to actually see the uh, building itself, which... Give me a I... technology check, Mercurio. Happily. Let me uh, attempt to show him what I mean. bring up the map and slowly rechase your steps onto the street itself where you were open fire upon. You distinctly remember the detour. Oh, uh, yes. Um, it w uh, I guess like, I, we successfully found the building. Yes. Yeah, you have. Um, you could retrace your steps there. It's around 3.30 a.m. at present. Um, actually, I'm going <laughs> to... I'm going to say that it is actually June 19th, 2021. <laughs> when does the sun rise in Chicago? I'm going to Google this right now. 5.15 a.m. Um, so you have not a lot of time to get there and back before you get obliterated by the Sky Tyrant. Um, it might behoove you to rest and go back the next evening. Would you like to do so? Uh, sure. But I would also like to contact uh, one, like um, some of Victor's ghouls, have him dress up vaguely as, a, vaguely as us and kind of walk by the building tonight <laughs> and see just what happens. You're <laughs> <laughs> Alright, you're, you're gonna need to give me a... Well, you're gonna have to go to Victor's place, and then you're gonna have to tell them. So, do you want to go to Victor's house? I... would not trust that at this time. I probably wouldn't. I'd prefer to go back to uh, my 
uh, place to sleep tonight. You have a place? Like, well, like, I have my own place to sleep. Is Like, I haven't uh, slept at your, um, at Victor's place, always. Well, let's go to your place, then. Indeed. Francois is 100% following, regardless of whether or not you give permission. <laughs> Real Francois going. hours. All right, Ambrosia, are you going to allow them back to your lair? Uh, I'm going to have to say no. Unfortunately, I cannot... Uh, there isn't... There isn't space for multiple kindred where I typically rest at night. Then we'll figure something out. Yes, uh... Mercurio is gonna, um, pull up, <laughs> hmm, I'm thinking, uh, he's not, I'm thinking out loud, I am not certain we should trust motels as Anyone could be anywhere. Nor would it necessarily be worthwhile to disguise ourselves in an attempt on a hotel. Any thoughts, Francois? Uh, I care little, to be honest. Uh, where we end up is where we end up. I'm certain it will not be the worst place that I have uh, slept. So, I leave it to you. I cannot. Uh, but the bed is preferable. Uh, well, I was going to say ones that did not have uh, heroin needles in it, but truthfully, I do not even care about that. I am used to finding heroin <laughs> needles in my bed. <laughs> So where are we going to bed bed down for the evening, Dark Denizen? I do not believe we should go back to Victor's. I... Motel 6 it is. What? Stupid. Motel 6 it is. <laughs> Motel it is. Um, would you happen to have an easy way to disguise ourselves a little bit? Francois? Uh, hoods and large sunglasses, perhaps? Wait. There are surely 24 hour drugstores open and accessible in the time we have between now and checking in? Yes. One of us will have a poor disguise as a woman. I mean, uh, I can uh, please. Lend you, I can lend you my robe if you want. Please, all cross dress to not get shot tonight. Please. <laughs> are, are we doing this, y'all? We're just gonna like raid a drugstore real quick to have to find like the cheapest, gaudiest uh, accessories we can to look like really ugly, trashy women. Why don't you just? Like a... Why don't you just dominate? a bunch of women coming out from the nightclubs that are closing around this time and just take their shitty club clothing, doll yourselves up and call it a day. Old would be too visible. <laughs> I don't look good in red. <laughs> no, no, no. Actually, that's a great idea. I'm in for it. I'm just trying Sounds to find good. like if there's any uh, thrift stores that are open 24 hours in Chicago. Thrift, thrift stores, maybe not, but I mean, if he... If you walk into a random CVS 24 hours, you'll be able to get crappy extensions, crappy sunglasses, and something obscenely trashy that might have been considered feminine in the 50s for, like, a coat. Like, that is a thing. 
Francois, any thoughts? Not really, if I'm being honest. Okay. I think we should go cross-dress poorly. Well, you may cross-dress poorly, but I will cross-dress fantastically. Great, let's do it. Um, okay, so where are we going to accomplish this farcical task? <laughs> Francois goes to a rival nightclub. Fine. Let's I see, need you there. to roll me a result. Actually, let me... Intelligence Wits. Um, Will I also need to do that? Because I'm following. Yes, everyone has to roll Intelligence Wits, DC3. Can mine be Streetwise Wits? I will allow that. Oh, well then I want to do Streetwise Wits. You're allowed to do Streetwise Wits. Um, you can actually use any skill check modifier as long as it's reasonable. You just have to beat a... Ooh. Wait, what? Any skill check? You can uh, use anything skill? that is reasonable in order to purloin clothes in order to cross-dress so that you do not get assassinated in the streets. Why not manipulation intelligence? <laughs> that works. That's reasonable. Eh, look at that! <laughs> eh, yeah. Mercurio <laughs> just walks up to somebody and says, hey, give me your clothes. Your clothes are nice and I should have them. <laughs> and they're like, yeah, you're right. <laughs> I don't know, you can, you can go ahead and, and describe the role play as to how you manage to... Um, Okay, so Mercurio and Francois have passed. Um, Ambrosi, you are welcome to retry with whatever you believe is appropriate for getting women's clothing. So I will, um, you know, uh, approach like a, like a, I guess like a girl by herself um, and mesmerize them quick and take them into an alley. Okay. Um, oh god, is mesmerize a roll or is it like just a thing you do? I can't recall off the top of my head. Ah, uh, crap. I need to pull up the book to confirm. I don't have it open. Uh, Mercurio, meantime. I, I think it was a roll if um, they were expecting it or if they were uh, kindred or, you know, like supernatural. Oh, here we go. You can issue complex ta- it's a rouse check. Give me a rouse check and then do manipulation plus dominate or intelligence versus resolve. Okay. Um, oh, wow. Um, you gain a blood point. Um, just means you have to drink blood. Um, I fail to understand why rousing blood is so terrifying unless you do things in order. You feel that your beast begins to rankle at the scent of this woman and you need to feed you are compelled to feed. How do you feed? I will talk to this woman about how does she feel about uh, blood donations. <laughs> no, sorry, and you, you asked me for uh, what from me. Uh, how are you going to feed from her? Um, go ahead. Um, blood donations is a hilarious angle. You feed upon her, and she falls into a stupor, and while she is in a stupor, you purloin her clothing, except for undergarments. Um, do you leave her there as she is, half naked in an alley, unconscious, or do you do something in order to ameliorate the situation? Uh, I am going to... Like, does she, like, she has a phone on her, right? Yeah. Is it locked? It is, but it has a fingerprint sensor. I will, um... Okay, so yeah, she's dressed for clubbing, right? Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna put, uh, whatever, like, my clothes on her. <laughs> um... What are you wearing? <laughs> like just like a like a robe or something. <laughs> it's gonna look really strange, but okay. Yeah, she looks like some weird mystic now. Go on. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah. So I'm gonna go up to. And yeah. fuck. Okay. I'm gonna try and get an Uber for her, uh, to send her home. Uh, story is that. 
I uh, like we were <clears throat> crashing like a what a fancy dress sort of party, um, and she's absolutely trashed. And I'm just gonna like you know, uh, what like call whoever her uh, friend is and say yeah, just sending him home, uh, sending him over to you. What's a good address I can put in there? Um, you simply punch in the address for her driver's license, which you reasonably conclude is where she lives. Well, no, I'm, I'm, well, okay. Like, the thing is, I'm trying to call someone at the other end so they can help her out of the car. Um, give me an intelligence investigation check. Let me double check here. Yeah, intelligence investigation. You look through her recent uh, text messages and see her talking to her roommate. You phone the roommate and explain, Hey, your friend's here a little drunk. I'm trying to send her home. Can you meet her outside when I order the lift for her? And they ask where she is. You kind of relay, Oh, you know, she's at this club. And it's like, Oh, she tends to do that. Um, they buy your story immediately. You order the lift. You order the Uber or what have you. You just kind of throw her in the back in your terrible clothing. <laughs> And you send her on her way. And and the situation resolves itself remarkably. Alright. Now, <clears throat> Francois, how do you acquire your clothing? Um, Francois is going to... I think he's going to, like, charm different women. Like, he'll, like, scope them out and be like, I like her top. I like her skirt. I, you know, that sort of thing. And, like, then just kind of, like, charm them, but not in, like, a vampire way, just in, like, a he's a charismatic dude way. Uh, um, and then basically, like, convince, be like, oh, wow, this is such a nice top. Like, can I try it on? And then just, like, leaving with it. But not from, like, one person, from, like, several different people, so that he assembles an entirely new outfit, which is better than anything anyone else was wearing. <laughs> oh my god. Real Francois hours. <laughs> okay, so... You definitely accomplished that task. Your outfit is breathtaking. You're a beautiful woman. Heads are turning. Everyone is mesmerized. Um, now, Mercurio, how do you acquire your clothing? Mercurio is gonna look for either a woman on her own or a few, a small number of women who seem to be approximately his size, and he is gonna just, uh, can you can you just dominate like? Uh, let me double check dominate really quick. I actually have dominate open right now. Uh, where the fuck am I? Um, there's multiple levels. Do you want to do cloud memory, mesmerize, or dementation? What do you want to do here? I think all I need is mesmerize if they're already you know. All right, make a rouse check. Mm -hmm. Where do I make left? There's a button. There's a button that just says "Rouse check." Just click that. Oh, oh yeah. All right, do it again because you're ancillary. Okay, you pass. Um, you mesmerize them, which allows you to issue a series of commands, and they have to comply. Technically, you would do um, do a manipulation and dominate check for me, really quick. All right. Uh, where is a dominate check? Is it? Oh, I think I found it. No. It's in your features section. Wait. Yeah. No, I'm being. No, it's under discipline. It's dis right? it's under disciplines. So just click dominate. See, I just did it for you. And oh, well, yeah, it. you're <laughs> fine. Um, <laughs> explain how you definitely overpower the febrile will of this woman. Apparently. All right. First of all, did I find one woman, or did I have to find two? Um. I okay. I really doubt you're as finicky as Francois when it comes to the assemblage of your outfit. You're 
a simple no, no, no. man. I was looking for one woman, but I was I am aware that most women do not go to nightclubs solo. So if I can find one by herself, that makes this easier. Do I find one by herself? Yes, you do. Your dominate was deft. You expertly Great. scan the scenario and you find the one person perfectly poised to give you what you need. Great. Walk up to her. I say, Hi. I believe we've met, but it's so loud in here. I'm so confused. Can you help me? Oh, yes. What seems to be the problem? He guides her outside and says, Much better. You see, sadly, I am... Um, uh, real quick, how old is this woman? 22. 22? Great. Probably a Democrat. Um, <laughs> wait, no, that's not how I'm going to do this. Different idea. <laughs> 22? Great. He's going to say... Look, I... I came here with friends, but... They left me, and... And I don't know what they put in my drink, but now I'm in these weird clothes, and I look like a boy. I feel so terrible. Would you please let me put on what you're wearing so I won't be so triggered? You notice their... North, uh, northwestern demeanor and their obvious progressive tendencies and you dig deep yep. into those um, predilections you sew yourself into the very marrow of her being and not only that but a little bit of vampiric trickery and you dominate her will and she says of course she takes you to the ladies west restroom and switches clothes with you and even helps you do your makeup and get you all dolled up and even helps, you know, kind of buzz down. Um, does Mercurio have facial hair? This is one strange thing we have not discussed. What is everyone's hair situation right now? Um, <laughs> I believe the picture I selected a long time ago was clean shaven, but I don't remember because you replaced my icon on the thing. Oh yeah, that was an accident. Um, um, I believe you, he was you, clean shaven though. You don't grow facial hair because you're just permanently clean shaven so I'm going to say that you're slick as an arrow you have laid on the clothing and a lot of you are now all dolled up and in your femme we're going to start from the top here and we're going to I'm see how gonna... we're going to see how you go ahead go ahead Mercurio I was just going to point out that Mercurio has longish hair so if they want to like ponytail it or something they can okay perfect but anyway go on perfect so Taking it from the top, Francois, Mercurio, Ambrosi, how do you reconnoiter? You've come together, you've assembled your outfits, you're hot to trot. How do you come together? We still have cell phones, right? Yes. Let's, uh, I'm gonna call my uh call them and uh I'm like hey let's uh let's reconvene in uh the center of this uh little nightclub strip and then seek a uh CD hotel for the night. Alright. Uh Ambrosi Francois, do you respond in kind? Hey, oui. That's Francois trying to do a feminine voice. Oui. <laughs> All right. Um, 
Mercurio will uh, get on Google again to uh, seek out motels in the area. Are there any within walking distance of a hub of nightclubs? Yes. Great. We pick one. You order a lift and you arrive at the CD hotel with boarded up windows and everything, which the owner Wait, apologizes. I said it was walking distance. Oh, sorry. Um, you walk up to the hotel, the motel. The windows are boarded up because of various shootings have destroyed the windows. Um, the owner apologizes and whatnot and offers you a discount because of the decrepit conditions, which you are more than happy to comply with because it means less light enters the room. Um, you pay, you rest and you awaken at the sun petering past the horizon the last embers of its light dissipating in the dark yet again settles upon Chicago and it is 5 o'clock so we're going to close it out right about now and we will be seeing one another soon in these in the uh, dreaming dark denizens of the dread of the Chicago night Take care, everyone, and thank you for listening.